Phone Henge. The greatest but most unexplainable monument here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Most historians believe this was created out of pure sorrow because nothing has been the cause of more sober crashes than the cell phone. Let's examine. Almost all of the nominees for Canada's Worst Driver Season 10 are addicted to their cell phone. Oh, Cheney, Cheney. Oof! Cheney from Calgary. I gotta call you back. Is the self described selfie queen? Selfie, 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 selfie. She loves to take selfies while driving. Mariah from Port Colborne, Ontario, also takes selfies while driving. That is, when she's not talking or texting. Okay. Jason from Sudbury used to use a cell phone while driving, but his brother Bart convinced him to get rid of it. Now, he just reads the paper. Read a couple of headlines. George from St. Catharines, Ontario, texts, talks, Hey, we're coming to see you now. And watches television on his cell phone. Actually, I want a TV here, but they're expensive. 80 and a 30. Seaham from Calgary would not dream of driving distracted. That's because her own fear of driving is distraction enough. I don't want to be in the middle of the traffic. Oh, God. Tyler, a licensed pilot from Quebec, doesn't use a cell phone while driving. But he does distract himself by eating and drinking. Oh. Give me the phone. Santana from Port of Basque, Newfoundland, drives while making status updates, talking, and texting. I don't have to pour that phone at the window. Stop cursing me. A distracted driving demonstration is something we've been doing at the rehab center for nine years now. And every year, it gets more and more important. Do you only drive distracted? Yeah, I don't ever drive, just... You don't ever drive without your cell phone in your hand? Ever? Ever. What? Is that true? That's true. That's Jim Bob, Santana's best friend. To start this demonstration, Canada's worst drivers will get used to this course at 30k an hour with no distractions. Would you be able to drive this course all day at this speed and not hit anything? Yes, I can. Now, we'll start adding distractions. We're not going to do anything that you don't normally do in your regular driving life at home in Port of Basque, okay? Okay. Phone one of your friends in Newfoundland right now and tell them what you're doing. Whoa. Whoa. I can't even get my phone. Once Santana finds her phone, oh, wow. she stares at it instead of the road while calling her friend Chantel. How's baby? Man, I really cannot be doing this and driving ain't, at the same time. Ain't I been telling you that all along? What's the worst thing you've hit while driving distracted? Another vehicle. I did $2,600 damage. This is crazy. With the phone call over... I'm going to die. Santana is now sending me some texts. Oh, my God. So, now do you get the point? Yes. Yeah. If you don't get the point, let me be absolutely factual. A recent study by Virginia Tech found that if you text while driving, you are 23 times more likely to crash. How many texts do you send every day while driving? Um... How many text messages do you think Santana sends while driving per day? 50, 100, 150, or 1,000? 
I'd say a good thousand for sure. What? You do not send a thousand texts in one day. Yeah, I send a lot of text messages. Santana has sent me two text messages. One of them says, hey. One of them says, how are you? Is this the depth of the information you need to share? Yeah, usually. It's not nothing big. Tell me the list of things you've hit while texting. Garbage cans, guardrails, vehicles, cats. And it never crossed your mind that maybe this is irresponsible behavior? No, not until now. Now? Santana does understand how dangerous texting and driving is. I will never use my cell phone again while driving, I promise. Tyler never texts while driving because... I've walked into a pole while texting. Tyler does drink bottled beverages while driving, though. I looked for the drink, I grabbed the drink, and then I hit the wall. Now Tyler's dropped the drink lid and is trying to pick it up off the floor. Trying to pick something up off the floor while driving makes you nine times more likely to crash, oh. according to the Canadian Automobile Association. It's got to be here. So can you hold this drink for a second? The guy who's now got the drink is Tyler's best friend, Q. Oh, Tyler, get back on the court. And Q knows that Tyler is most dangerous when he's fumbling with his cigarettes. I normally have this down pat. Okay, lighter, lighter shit. Oh. Look, look, look. Wow. Licensed pilot Tyler needs to stop smoking, eating, and drinking while driving. A pilot does any of those things while in flight, what happens to his license? Oh, you'll lose it. You'll lose it. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers go through our distracted driving demonstration. Here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, we have four experts on staff. Nine years ago, when Cam Woolley joined our staff, he looked like this. Over the past decade, Cam's look has changed, but his role on our panel has not. He's our legal expert. Philippe Letourneau has spent the last eight years as our high-speed driving instructor. Our head driving instructor, Tim Danter, has been with us for three years. And Shamala Kiru, our resident therapist, has been helping the mindset of Canada's worst drivers for the last four years. All but one of the nominees for Canada's worst driver like to drive distracted. Get to watch TV while you're driving. Chaney even takes selfies while driving her six-year-old son around. Selfie! And Chaney is the next driver on our distracted driving course. You could drive around this thing all day, hey? Yeah, exactly. Chaney describes herself as the queen of selfies. Yes, I am the selfie queen. Before Chaney can take a selfie, though, she has to find her phone. I don't know where it is! Ah! Whoa, well, where are you going? Oh, shit! I'm trying to find my phone! Oh yeah, you laugh, but 78 people in Ontario alone last year died due to distracted driving, okay? I know, I know, I understand. Take a selfie. Ah. Chaney's boyfriend Jeremy is smiling because he's wanted her to learn this lesson for a long time. How many selfies would you say you take per day ah. while behind the wheel? Like 10 or 15? <gasps> 10 or 15 a day while driving. Yeah, it's so bad, I know. Take the selfie. I'm trying to. I can't. Jeez. Ah, ah, ah. 
Can you post that to Facebook for me, please? Oh, my goodness! Caption it with, I'm doing something which might kill someone. Oh, my God! Oh! Okay, it's posted. Frig! I hope Cheney is getting the point of this. The point of this whole demonstration is to show... Is to show, like, if you're distracted, that you could kill somebody. That's correct. Take another selfie for me. Oh! 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 Shit! Whoa! Cheney got a foam cube underneath her car and caught air. If she doesn't stop driving distracted, she knows it's just a matter of time until disaster happens to her in public. <laughs> it's bound to happen one of these days if I don't stop. <laughs> For the sake of her son, Max, Cheney has to stop driving distracted. Like, what if I had, like, Max in the car with me, like... Oh my god. It's an eye-opener for sure. Jason likes to eat while he drives. Hey. Uh, were you eating the cupcake? Yes, I was. Jason also likes to read behind the wheel. Driving! Today, we're having him read a paragraph from the driver's handbook. Please, God, don't ever read while you drive. That's Bart, Jason's concerned brother. Driving is a job that requires your full attention. I'm trying to look at the words. When driving, look at the road. Probably best bet to never put a newspaper in your car again. Exactly. George never drives without his cell phone. Oh, oh. Unless he drops his cell phone, which is something his best friend Patrick has seen too many times. This is crazy. Patrick is now having George call his fiance Michelle for me. Hi. Michelle, I'm just wondering if you think it's dangerous how much he uses his phone while driving. Oh, absolutely. Make a or watch TV if he's driving. Uh, if he likes to do that. Not anymore. That sounds like your lying face. Oh, my God. If he's smiling, because when he smiles, that's a lying face. George hits 24 things and cracks four pylons in half. One of those pylons could be your kit, my kit. Yeah, for sure. Who that just gives me chills. Yep. Distracted Mariah will be last on this course. When I rear-ended the cop, I was texting. When she's at home... Hook me up, buttercup. Mariah eats while driving almost every day. Shit! Shit! I didn't even finish my cupcake! Mariah's friend Jessica is not amused. However, Mariah seems to find this whole demonstration hilarious. As human beings, we experience a whole range of emotions from happiness to sadness and fear. And one of my concerns with Mariah is we never see her express anything but happiness. That concern is something Shamala investigated yesterday when she had a one-on-one -on -one session with Mariah. You always seem really, really happy. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Have there been times in your life where you felt sad? Yeah. Plenty of times. And how do you ex how would you express that? I don't know. I do express it, not in front of people. Is there anyone close to you that you can express sadness to? No. No one at all? Has it always been that way? Probably. It hasn't always been that way. Mariah says she stopped expressing happiness at age 12 when her father vanished from her life. I'm sure that the people that are close to you, that care about you, would love to see this part of you. I don't know. 
just a little bit of what you did here today. Do you think you can try it? No. Not with any that I have in my life right now. But do you think that's why you drink and drive? Like, do you think that... Do you drink a lot? I should ask. A lot. Mariah isn't worried about hurting herself because she's already decided that her future will be unfulfilling. I don't know. I don't think that I could ever get, like, a real career looking the way I do. And you like, mean because of your tattoos? Yeah, and my ears. That's the one thing, that's the one factor that holds you back. Yeah. From doing anything. Because even if I went to school for it, it's not like I'm going to get a job for anything. I wonder if you don't take this whole drinking and driving thing seriously, you don't take consequences seriously, because there's a part of you that just kind of feels like, what's the point? Oh, yeah. I can't really get anywhere anyway. Yeah. But I don't think that's true. I think you've told yourself that that's true, but I don't think that's true. Really? Yeah. Really. And I feel like life. you're sort of, you know, flushing your life down the toilet. Yeah. Honestly. Is it correct that you change your clothes while driving? Yeah. To make this dangerous activity even more life-threatening, Mariah always takes off her seatbelt while changing clothes. Where are you going when you're changing your clothes in the car? To the club. To the club that you're going to usually drive home drunk from? No. Mm -hmm. How much did you have to drink on your birthday? A lot. More than five drinks? Yes. More than eight drinks? Yes. You probably had about 12 drinks? Probably, yes. And a bottle of wine. And a bottle of wine. And then drove. Yeah. Mariah <laughs> needs to make a change. I'm never gonna be on my phone again and drive. I promise. Good. Do you believe her? Not really. When we come back... I don't understand this crap. Canada's worst drivers get a reversing lesson. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> Can you force someone to learn something? Yes, of course you can. And we're about to force Canada's worst drivers to learn how to use their side mirrors when reversing. And to do that, we're going to have them reverse around this giant figure eight course in a mysteriously long vehicle. And believe you me, if they don't use their side mirrors, they'll fail for sure. The mysterious vehicle in question has a lot of things attached to it. But for this challenge, only two of those things are necessary. The side mirrors. So what do we have to do? We have to reverse? Yes, indeed. This is an entirely reverse challenge, okay? I think my <laughs> stomach muscles are reversing. Your side mirrors are your only friend in this challenge. There's lots of room. You don't have to hit anything. You can just reverse slowly, calmly, smoothly around this course. Getting smoothly around the turns requires positioning the back end of this vehicle as close to the inside part of the bend as possible. This allows the front end to swing wide without hitting the outside edge of the course. If you just look at your mirrors, you can do it easily. Completing the course? Took me just under five minutes. The good news is it's a van everybody's in. Mariah, you're in the front seat, everybody else in. Oh! Oh my god. This is so exciting! Oh. Shot nine. That's right. Canada's worst drivers will be the passengers in this lovely, lovely man van. I want this thing. This thing's sick in here. So do you need the mirrors set? Or are they good? You know what? I think they're good. When she gets going. Oh wait. What? Oh, where do we go? Um, There's only go one way. way. Mariah doesn't use her mirrors. You're close to things on our side. I am? Yeah. The blind leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah, can you see this blinker in, in, your, in no. your mirror? Don't tell me you started a mirror reversing challenge without adjusting your mirrors. I did. Mariah has to stop laughing at everything. 
And she has to learn the meaning of okay. I hit like 13 things, which is okay. Cheney does not understand front end swing. That's what, three hits in a row? Yeah. <laughs> you got this. Four. Four. So, Cheney, if you're turning to your left, you want to be on which side? My right. Well, try that and see how the front end swing works out for you. You want to be as close to the left as you can. Oh, that was <laughs> awful. Cheney said she'd be happy if she learned how to deal with front end swing. No, I wasn't happy. No. Pilot Tyler starts with a pre-flight announcement. Everybody welcome aboard. <laughs> as soon as we do get going, we'll be reaching a cruising speed of about one. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. Thank we you. might hit turbulence, so keep your belts on the hook. <laughs> Tyler is baffled by front end swing. That's your front end swing. That's all front end swing. This is pure insanity. And you'd think after the first turn, he'd get it figured out. Miss it, miss it. But he's still front end swinging on the final straightaway. Okay, well that's, that's front end swing disaster right there. Oh my God. Tyler, didn't enjoy that lesson. There was some learning aspects that I liked, but I uh, hated everything else about it. George will get a punch from Patrick for everything he hits. Damn you. So that's one punch, right? Two. One from you. Once he gets repositioned... I'm good at backing up. George breezes around the figure eight faster than me. Good job. Two minutes and 50 seconds. Good job. George now has to pay for his mistake. <laughs> do I get to do it too? Yeah, I might as well. Kids, <laughs> violence is not the answer to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hey now. Santana is up next. I don't understand mirrors at all. Santana doesn't understand mirrors. Wait a minute, I'm trying to figure out which way I could turn this bus. Because she's never tried using them before. Man, I don't understand this crap. As soon as Santana experiments with steering while staring at the mirror, she starts understanding. She's got it now. Keep yeah. it going. And she completes the second half of the course without hitting anything. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Santana is a fast learner. I was thinking there was no way I was going to do that. No way. But I did it. Jason was last at an optometrist 12 years ago. He's blind. Yeah. Dr. Richard Surrey is now on the case, and he quickly discovers that... Oh, I do have that. Jason's eyeballs have nerve damage from elevated pressure, and he's showing early signs of glaucoma, which is eating away at his peripheral vision. Just looking straight ahead there. And overall, Jason's vision is so bad... I'll actually have to send a report to the Ministry of Transportation. Okay. That what an average person can see from a distance of 20 feet, he can only see if he's 50 centimeters away from. You found a lot more about my eyes than what any other optometrist did. Well, it's also been 12 years. On our Use Your Side Mirror Reversing Challenge, Jason can see! Unfortunately, though, he still can't steer. Ah, it was great. I can see clearly out of the uh, side view mirrors. Seaham came to rehab for a lot of reasons. Reversing is one of them. Okay, off. However, as her husband Wayne watches, Seaham quits. Everybody out. Well, 
Nazi ham tries to quit, but I don't let people quit. I know she'll get it. She just has to stop being so stubborn and she has to listen. So You're going to only stare at this mirror. Yeah, I think I'm over it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm over it. You're over what? The lesson. I, I, I don't think you're the walk away type. I don't buy it. While everyone else walks away, I drive Seaham to the biggest road in rehab. And out there, I'm able to teach Seaham correct mirror use. And if you can grasp that after a while, you can just do it for long distances. See what I'm saying? Seaham's not liking this, but I don't care. The only way to learn how to drive is to actually drive. If you if you just throw in the towel, you're going to be on the bus and I don't I don't want that for you. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers learn how to do a proper shoulder check. That's how we do it in the play. Some folks think that driving is best done when the driver is in a zen-like state. Peaceful, calm, collected. And while there is something to be said about driving while relaxed, there is also something to be said about doing rigorous shoulder checks. If you don't check into your blind spot when changing lanes on the highway, you may as well do yoga like this. Remember, kids, always check your blind spot when changing lanes, or you're going to get your knickers completely in a knot. Philippe Letourneau knows that before you can do a proper shoulder check, you have to sit correctly. Unlike Mariah, who sits on her foot, and Santana, who sits about a mile away from the wheel. So break for me now? I can't reach it. Whew. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of work to do with you. Philippe starts by positioning his seat. We need to find a proper adjustment for the lower part of the body. The best way to do that is you put your right foot underneath the brake pedal. If you can put your foot underneath the brake pedal with your hips pressed firmly against the back of the seat, your leg can never fully extend, and that's important because... When you panic, you're gonna break really hard. See, now oh. my leg is fully extended? Yeah. If I hit a wall, guess what's gonna happen? What? Something could snap your ankle, your knee, or even worse, your hip. A bent leg will act as a shock absorber, and no bones will break. The other thing I want you to also start using is what we call the dead pedal. Yes. Which is a bit difficult when your leg is underneath yes. the other one. By using the uh, dead pedal, you could actually brace yourself. Okay. This way, it's a lot easier to control the brake. Next part, we'll look at the upper part of the body. I'm going to leave my shoulder blade in the back of the seat. Okay. And I'm going to put my wrist at 12 o'clock. Okay. When you steer, yeah. shoulder will always stay in the seat. Okay. Okay. Next is the seat belt. Take the belt, put it on your hip, something solid. Not the belly? Yeah. And then pick up the slack. Belting across the belly can lead to internal organ damage in the case of a crash. You're not going to like this. What? I use a paper clip, and I actually clip it right there. And it's loose there, right? Yeah, now because I don't like the tightness pulling. So, Tyler, tell me, if, if we hit a wall right now, yeah. where does your body go? Forward, right? Oh, it's not even going to support it. And then you're in within the distance of the of airbag. The, you're oh. going to get killed. Show me how you do a shoulder check. Pretend you're driving. That's Go your right shoulder there. check, right? That's my okay. shoulder check. Do one the other way. Do one to the right. That's your shoulder check, right? Yeah. And look where your shoulder blades are. See the blade, the shoulder blade, the back is no longer connected with the seat. Okay. Okay. So most people do that actually. But when you do that, sometimes you'll steer at the same time. Just turn your head 90 degree to the left. So okay. this way, See my hands here? Yeah. 
at least if something happens in front of you, your peripheral vision will pick it up. Shoulder checks are important because side mirrors all have blind spots and you need to see what's in your blind spot. Four hour blind spot challenge. Drivers will come down this laneway at 70 kilometers an hour. Once they reach these two towers, they have to look backwards over both shoulders at each individual tower. That shoulder check may reveal a red square or a green square. If it's red, the lane on that side is considered to be closed. If the square is green, the lane on that side is open. Drivers must then proceed through the open lane. And the car they'll be doing this challenge in is our rapidly deteriorating Cadillac. I'm out the door. Ooh, this thing goes, man. It's so much fun. 60, that's 70 immediately. That's 70. Okay, doo -doo 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 -doo. wow, that's green and that's red. Oh, there's tons of time. And make the turn. That's how you do a shoulder check in our shoulder check challenge. Can Canada's worst drivers do it? They should be able to. It's really not hard. Seahan is the first driver who gets to go. Go, go, go. Look at your speedometer. On this course, drivers will get two chances. Okay. And on her first attempt, Seaham's lane change is terrible. Damn it. And on her second attempt, when she makes her shoulder check, she turns the wheel. Queen. Watch that again. Seaham looks to her right and turns to her right. This one little movement pulled her right out of her lane. Oh my God, Lane. Driving might be too much for Seaham. To kind of focus on posture, speed, look where you're going, it's just, it's too much. Tyler thinks his passenger is his co-pilot. Co-pilots, keep your eye on the speeds. I want you to call them in knots as I reach 50, 60, 70. Cool. That's how we do it in the plane. Tyler's not in a plane. Stop right there, guys. Stop right there, guys. Stop right there, guys. One of the lessons we teach here at the rehab center is that when you're driving, you're driving. <laughs> Got it. Without Q's help, Tyler botches his first lane change. Oh, oh. And on his second attempt, his shoulders leave his seat when he checks into his blind spot. Red. Green. Oy. What happened there? Oh, no. What happened there was a lot of swerving. You turned when you looked. Oh, fudge. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers see if they can successfully do a shoulder check. Green, red. Oh, shit. Canada's worst drivers are being tested on their ability to look into their blind spot. What happened there? Oh, no. And Mariah is up next. I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> Go. Mariah likes driving barefoot, which is perfectly legal. Red, green. And this is a perfect run. Oh. <sighs> Mariah couldn't have done that if she was drunk. I just came from the shoulder check challenge, and it went well. Janie has no idea what a blind spot is. What's the point of shoulder checking if I can't see anything, like if it's a blind spot, do you know what I mean? And the mirrors are supposed to be there to look back. The blind spot is in your mirror. What? When a car is approaching you to pass, you can see them coming in your wing mirror. But when they get to here, they vanish from your wing mirror and they stay vanished until they enter your peripheral vision here. 
this area is what's known as your blind spot. They exist and they're real, and the shoulder check is the only way you're ever going to compensate for that. Maybe you don't believe in your blind spot. Maybe you'd like to kill a motorcyclist. I doubt you do, but that could happen if you don't check your blind spot. Check your blind spots, people. On Cheney's first attempt, her shoulder check causes her to swerve. Red, green, oh, shit. And on Cheney's second attempt, ah, green, red, oh, green, she brakes hard while changing lanes. Can't slam on the brakes. Breaking hard while changing lanes can get you rear-ended. I didn't you slam slammed on the, the brakes. brakes, Jeremy. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Oh my god, man. I didn't slam on the brakes, Jeremy. Yeah, you Jeremy. did. No, I yeah, didn't. you did. Jeremy, I did not slam yeah, on did. the brakes. Yeah, you did. Whatever. George likes to drive 150k an hour on the highway. So, you would assume he'll be able to do this challenge perfectly at 70. We're green, Red. Oh, shit. But George fails his first attempt. And on his second attempt... Green. Green. George makes a perfect lane change. But wait! The lane to George's right is red, and he turned into it. Yes. George... will now be punished. Just shut up. <laughs> I like this method of teaching. Oh. Kids really don't hit each other. <laughs> Jason will now do his first ever high speed challenge with glasses. He's got a piece of the puzzle that was missing for all these years. A big one, too. 70. Yeah, I'm going seven. Remember, yellow the colors. But glasses won't keep his shoulders in the seat while doing a blind spot check. Green, red. Uh, no! Ah, shoot. You looked this way and you brought the wheel with you, didn't you? Yes, I did. How was seeing, though? Very good. On his second attempt, Jason clearly sees which lane is green. Green, red. And he successfully steers into that lane. High five. Jason has his first rehab center success. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's sweet. Yes, man! Santana learned a lot in her seating lesson. I changed everything the way I was sit. It never crossed your mind before now to bring the seat up close enough to be able to hit the brake. Never crossed my mind once used to drive without being able to hit the brake. I'm just going to let that sink in for a sec. Let's just, let's just let that sink in. Could not brake. Green, red. Good girl! <laughs> Woohoo! Santana is a different driver than when she came to rehab. Did you ever even do a single shoulder check before coming here? No. Never once? Never once. When we come back, the experts and I pick this episode's graduate. We're all gonna have five completely different opinions. On this episode of Canada's Worst Driver, the nominees learned how to do a proper shoulder check. Damn it. They learned how to reverse using their side mirrors. This is pure insanity. And they learned that if they keep driving distracted, they could kill someone. It's bound to happen one of these days if I don't stop. Now, it's time for me and the experts to determine this episode's graduate. The person who does graduate this episode will have to promise to never drive distracted again, which is a promise George made to his fiancée yesterday. You promised her what? I promised her I would not be using my cell phone anymore when I was driving. I promised to never use my cell phone again while driving. 
I won't do anything other than focus on the road again. I swear not to pick up my phone while driving. Drinking and driving is like no questions asked. I can stop doing that. But like, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like not using my phone and driving is gonna be harder. Jason's promise is to wear his glasses every single time he drives from now on. Had you passed a single challenge at the rehab center before you put those glasses on? No, I haven't. No? And then you put the glasses on and you whip through that shoulder check challenge? Yes. Aced it? Yes. Seaham promises us nothing. She even says there's a good chance she might shut down again while we're trying to teach her. If I am not willing to be helped, then there is nothing you can do for me. It's time to vote for this episode's graduate. And let's just go down the line, starting with you, Tim. Do you, do you have an opinion on, on who should be this episode's graduate? Reluctantly, I'm going to throw Seaham out. Huh? You're gonna, you want to I'm graduate just, the I'm quitter? Just, I don't get that. I'm reluctant. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm just thinking that maybe we're not the environment for her. Uh, Shannon? Um, I don't think anyone's ready to graduate. No? No. Philip? I think the most improved is Jason. My yes. jaw's on the floor. Uh, Cam? I'm not ready to give up on Seaham. George has at times the best skills and sometimes some pretty bad judgment. But overall, George is who Cam thinks should graduate. I think it's Santana. That's one vote for Santana, one vote for George, one vote for Jason, one vote for Seaham, and one vote for no one to graduate. So, who will it be? Now, usually at the end of an episode, the experts and I, we pick two or maybe three people that perhaps should graduate, and then we debate it. But today, every single person on the panel had a different opinion. So, Jason, who's it gonna be? No, not you, not a chance in hell. Oh. <laughs> Santana, this episode's graduate is... You! Yay! Yay, yes! We sincerely believe that if you just put your cell phone down, Port of Basque is going to be a whole lot safer place for everyone. Okay, thank okay. you. When Santana arrived at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, she was a disaster on the road. Yeah, look at you running stoplights. Because she didn't know where to look when driving forward. When you're driving, where do you look? Down at the road. And Santana didn't know where to look when driving backwards. When I would look back, I would be looking at the seat, not watch. Where You'd I'm... be looking at the seat while reversing? Yes. Really? Mm-hmm. God, how did that work out for you? Not good. Once Santana learned where to look... Green, red. Her steering vastly improved while going forwards. Good girl! And while going backwards. Hey, you actually did that pretty good. I am impressed. And we taught Santana something even more important. The most important thing would be the distractor challenge. It made me realize how distracted that I am while driving and how harmful it can be. If she uses her cell phone when I'm in the car, I'm going to throw it at the window. Congratulations, Santana. Thanks very much. Will our experts agree next episode? Who knows? But we do all agree on one thing. One of these people is Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. The nominees are tested on whether or not they know how fast they're going. See, I can't even tell. How do you know? They learn how to avoid a suddenly appearing obstacle. Oh. And they learn that if they stop quickly, oh, okay. the weight of their vehicle will push forward. Oh. That's right. 
It's our 10th annual water tank challenge. 